Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us. As mentioned, our guest on the program, Will Slatyer, he offers a lifetime's experience in international studies through his varied careers. Sparked by the ideas of an American professor, Will has spent over 10 years proving that dominant cultures, empires of the world, obey a cyclical framework influenced by climate change. Will is an author and broadcaster, forecaster, lecturer, analyst. His new book is Life, Death, Rhythms of Capitalist Regimes, Debt Before Designer, Timetable of World Dominance, 1400 to 2100 A.D., and so many interesting things to talk about on the program. Will Slatyer, our guest. Will, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Uh, good morning, Rick. Uh, good to be, be here. It is fantastic to have you. Will is coming to us from Australia. And I mentioned author, broadcaster, forecaster, lecturer, analyst. I mentioned in the beginning that a lot of these ideas were sparked by an American professor. Let's talk a little bit about exactly what spark he, he lit in you and, and why you followed this course, because you've been very successful as a forecaster. Where did this all come from? Well, I, uh, I became a technical analyst when I joined a uh, Japanese wool buying firm. And I started, that was back in the 60s, and I discovered different techniques. And one of the techniques that I used was cycles. I used to use uh, cycles, which is basically psychological cycles, I suppose. And that enab enabled me to pick the major tops major bottoms of different markets and uh, I then discovered different other cycles but the longest one that I that I found was around about a 200 year cycle um, proposed by a uh, professor uh, uh, in Kansas University, and he had a theory on uh, weather cycles, that um, the cycles were 100-year cycles and even up to 1,000-year cycles. I've proved the, uh, the lesser cycles, the 100-year cycles, but the, uh, there's not enough time has gone by since uh, 3000 BC to prove a thousand year cycles. But those also his writings led me to uh, indicate that uh, different cultures, different civilizations rose and fall according to extremes in the weather cycle. And that intrigued me so. I started going back in history to see whether his theories were correct. And what's fascinating is, and I mentioned your success as a forecaster, by following these, these different patterns, by studying over the years these patterns, <laughs> you really have been able to forecast. Talk about some of the success that you had that we could relate to here <laughs> in the U.S. and actually correctly forecasting uh, major market uh, situations. Well, my first success was uh, forecasting the uh, devaluation of sterling back in the 1960s. But since then, I've uh, forecast the uh, peak in the wool, in greasy wool, uh, the peak in stock markets, and uh, the peak in oil. Um, just about anything that uh, has has a human contact in it. I mean, markets are made up of people, and group behaviour of people that I've found is cyclical. And we can relate here, and I'm looking at 2007, you forecast the major U.S. debt crisis and world stock market falls. Uh, a whole list of, of, of various uh, 
uh, economic situations that you, that you were able to foresee. And it's interesting you talk about that because you say basically over the years what human nature changes very little. That's right. That's what I, uh, that's what I found. When I started my research, I wasn't quite sure um, that, that it was correct. But uh, I started to, uh, I investigated each dominant culture in the world going back to about 3000 BC. And each, co each uh, dominant culture uh, started off, grew, peaked, then came down, reached a trough, and then the next dominant culture started. Uh, in the ancient days, um, it was a, uh, around about a 200-year cycle, and it kept pretty even to a 200-year cycle. As we got into more modern times, the cycle is uh, a little bit um, uh, not as even, but it still averages around about 200 years. With that means, sorry. Yeah, it just, it's interesting as you, as you look at this, we're talking about uh, the new book, Life, Death, Rhythms of Capitalist Regimes, Debt Before Designer, Timetable of World Dominance, 1400 to 2100 AD. The author is Will Slatyer. His website is cyclesofhistory-destiny.com. And you can link on to all of, uh, all of that information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, let's talk about the evolution of capitalism. That's something that uh, uh, you, you write a, a great deal about in this book. And for so many of us uh, involved in a capitalistic society, we really don't know that much about it. Talk about the evolution uh, because there's some ugliness to the past of capitalism, isn't there? Oh, yes, yes. I, uh, I estimated that the uh, capitalism, although it started much earlier, uh, became popular around about 1400. So that's where this particular book starts. The previous book, was the life, death, rhythms of uh, uh, ancient empires. But capitalism started around about 1400. It grew in Italy, but Italy was never a, uh, never a, never a really a dominant culture. Uh, I examined all the, uh, the different areas that I, I thought from 1400 to 1900, which included the Rurik dynasty in Russia, the Ming dynasty in China, the Habsburg dynasty, which of course uh, led to the dominance of Spain, the Ottoman dynasty of Turkey, the Persian uh, Safavid uh, dynasty, the Valois Bourbon kings of France, uh, India under the Mughal empires, the Tokugawa shoguns, the Dutch Republic. Uh, they gave me the early uh, lead into the 20th century. And of course the 20th century was uh, early uh, dominated by the British Empire before America became the dominant culture. Uh, if my estimates are correct, the uh, America took over from uh, uh, the British Empire as a dominant culture around about 1920. World War I was the last gasp, I suppose, of the British Empire. And, and you, since, yes, go ahead, I'm sorry. Sorry, since then, uh, the United States of America has been the dominant culture. And the, the conclusion, the thing about cycles is once you recognize a cycle as a pattern, you can then 
forecast in the future what will happen with that particular cycle and maybe future cycles. And the, uh, the current cycle that I can see uh, has already peaked, if I'm correct, the American culture peaked around about 1975 and now is in decline. And if I, my forecasts are correct, the uh, China should take over as the dominant culture in the world uh, between 2020 and 2028. So it, that's n not too far in the future. No, the, the early end of that is just several years away, and you say that's not necessarily disastrous. No, I mean, uh, look at the British Empire, for instance. It, uh, it faded as a culture, but England is still bumbling along as a, uh, as a country. Uh, still quite dominant in a number of fields, and particularly, I mean, its economy is very strong. And we'll see, actually, how uh, good England is when they decide whether or not to uh, stay in the European Union. Why is it, do you think, that the U.S. has faded, the dominance of the U.S. is <coughs> fading, and you see in a matter of a few years, being overtaken by China. Why the, why the fade of, of the U.S.? Well, I, it's my theory that it's, uh, the, the politics has started to decline. And most uh, or many dominant cultures in history have lost power because their own politics uh, has made them weaker, I suppose. The, uh, sometimes, of course, one dominant uh, power takes over from a dominant power due to war, but that's not always the case, in particular since 1400, since more modern times. It's not necessarily war that causes a change of dominance. It's the uh, uh, decline in the dominant power itself. And if I'm correct, the two areas uh, where the U.S. was dominant is in currency, in the U.S. dollar, and in its politics. And I think both of them are fading at the moment. Is it reversible if someone has this knowledge that, um, you know, in, in studying <coughs> historical trends that we're on the downside, China is on the upswing, and at some point they're going to pass us, some point fairly soon. Is this reversible? Uh, well, I haven't uh, found any history of any uh, dominant culture that reversed their um, decline. I mean, yes, I think it's uh, possibly reversible, but it means a change in the uh, opinions of the people of that culture. And unfortunately, that doesn't change in a hurry. Uh, if I'm correct, the peak was back in 1975, and that was partly to do with the dollar at that stage. You, uh, that was when, around about when President Nixon uh, decoupled the US dollar from gold and allowed the uh, future governments to just keep printing money. And there's been more money printed in the uh, last uh, 20 years than there has been in all history. So. Uh, I suppose we're in a new uh, a new paradigm at the moment, but I can't see it changing. In fer terms of politics, uh, well, I've seen comments in American newspapers saying that the politics <laughs> that you're going through at the moment is a bit strange. Uh, yes, that's being very kind. Thank you. That uh, I think strange probably sums it up fairly well. Will Slatier, our guest on the program, time going by way too quickly, that's spelled S 
uh, L-A-T-Y-E-R. His website is cyclesofhistory-destiny.com. He's written a number of books. The new book we're talking about, Life, Death, Rhythms of Capitalist Regimes, Debt Before Designer, Timetable of World Dominance, 1400 to 2100 A.D., the book's, of course, available all uh, all across the world, and you'll get information uh, by going to uh, Will's website. You can link on directly by our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Let's talk in the time remaining, in a couple minutes left in the program, about climate cycles and the role that's played, because that's very significant as well, isn't it? Yes, yes. The... Uh, the um the theory is that as the climate warms, and as, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I don't want to enter into the, uh, uh, the debate on climate change. As far as I'm concerned, we are warming. We're part of a, a warming, but I think we're part of a warming cycle. I don't necessarily think that all the warming that we're undergoing at the moment and we will undergo in the future is due to uh, human cause. I don't believe that uh, that climate change is caused by humans. There is a cycle and uh, that uh, was uh, examined at, at strength by the party at, at Kansas University and the, the data from that I've only just found is at the uh, Market Technicians Association uh, in America, in New York. Uh, I haven't examined the original data, but I accept what, uh, what, has, been, what has been said. The, uh, uh, I'm just trying to think the... Um, well, I know you feel that uh, what there's by 2035, I believe, a uh, will be the possibility of a uh, a hot, dry peak that will happen uh, pretty much uh, 2035, I believe. Well, hot, hot, dry weather uh, produces uh, political unrest and quite often upheavals. Um, the the last really hot, dry period was back about 1930. And uh, all your listeners would know what happened in the 1930s. Yes. Uh, the, the Depression then was uh, uh, embedded in the American psyche. The, the uh, Americans in general have been scared of another depression. And uh, that comes from the 1930s. Yeah, it's amazing. And you showed that with research that periods of hot, dry, and cold, dry, uh, the effects they have on human behavior. It's a fascinating book. And as I mentioned, uh, the forecasting based on the cycles that you've been able to determine by literally years of study really has been spot on. Uh, our guest on the program, Wilt Slatyer, the new book, and he's written a number of books. This one is Life, Death, Rhythms of Capitalist Regimes, Debt Before Dishonor, Timetable of World Dominance, 1400 to 2100 A.D. The book is available worldwide. Will's website is cyclesofhistory. Uh, I'm sorry, slash destiny.com, cyclesofhistory.com. Visit our website this week in america.us and link on directly with uh, Will's website and get information well, in about a minute or so left in the program, what response are you getting? Because you lay out this case so well using history as the foundation. What kind of response are you getting to the book? Well, I haven't advertised it uh, very much. Uh, I've been too busy doing other things. It was a, a, a theory of mine that I investigated for over 10 years. And... Uh, for me, I just wanted to put it down in writing, and I haven't had any criticism uh, from any major academics or whatever, and I'm hoping that some of your listeners might get a copy of the book 
uh, Amazon is the easiest way to get it. But uh, I'm hoping to get some constructive criticism from your program. It is a fascinating book based on fact, based on history. Once again, the name of the book is Life, Death, Rhythms of Capitalist Regimes, Debt Before Dishonor, Timetable of World Dominance, 1400 to 2100 A.D. As well mentioned, information available at Amazon. His website is cyclesofhistory-destiny.com. And you can link on directly to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and go to Amazon and go to Will's website as well. Will Slatier, the author and our guest on the program. Will, a fascinating book. Uh, it, it is so impressive, the research that you've been able to do, how you've been able to take that research over the years and uh, and come up with just a totally accurate forecast. It's a fascinating uh, book, and I thank you so much for being on and sharing that with us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rick. It was great speaking to you. Thank you. Same here, sir. And once again, Will Slatier, our guest. Life and Death Rhythms of Capitalist Regimes, Debt Before Dishonor. The book is available all across the country. Information at Amazon and, of course, information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us.